Hello, welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. This lecture will be a continuation of our discussion of maximum likelihood sequence estimation. If you remember from our previous lecture, we were looking at the, pro at the problem of identifying a sequence of symbols that were sent through a channel which has a convolutional characteristic. In particular, since the symbols were getting mixed up, you had inter-symbol interference and the gist was that if you write down the noise model and find out the optimal detection strategy, it boils down to optimizing this particular expression that is, sorry, that is lambda b is real part of angle bracket y s b, s b essentially is is the, is the signal that is received which contains the effect of the channel including the convolutional effect minus norm S b square upon 2. Now, we mentioned that if you are going to try all possible combinations of S b's that account for the channel and modulation, the unfortunate fact is that you need a large number of computations. For example, let us say you have a 1000 QPSK symbols to detect and there are there no their qpsk implies that there are four possible symbols you have to try all 4 power 1000 combinations and that seems very prohibitive but one hint that we can get over here is that since y and sb are summations of signals and this they sum over time could it be that we can get an incremental approach and start making decisions without having to look at all combinations that is what we are going to see so, let us start, we are going to look at the two parts in isolation. Let us say you take a real part of angle bracket y comma s b, that is summation over k real part of b star z k. How do we get that? Essentially, you perform matched filtering, that is you perform match filtering over y to get uh, angle bracket y s b and you get z n s y star m f of k t. Let us actually write this down and do it in a formal manner. So, let me now lambda b is real part of angle bracket y s b ok minus norm s b square upon 2. Now, if you recall the way we constructed S b was S b is essentially summation b k t of t minus k t that is basically what S b is. So, let us actually define our z k as that corresponding to the k -th term. How do you define it? z k is y star p matched filter of k t. This should be very evident because angle bracket y s b is actually integral y of t s b conjugate of t and that boils down to the same thing over here. You are just taking the kth sample over here. So, this is equal to integral y of t and if you remember from our previous discussion p match filter of t is actually p star of minus t. Since p m f is p star of minus t you can check that this actually is going to become t minus k t of t t and this particular quantity z k can be computed. What you need to do is you just need to take p uh, the you know you need to take the match filter and you need to take samples. So, z k has the same meaning as you had in the case where you did not have any channel z k corresponds to sampled versions of the match filter outputs no difference. Now, of course, the I will remark that no difference meaning there is no difference in the definition of z k, but in, a, in practice z k has information about this symbol and potentially past symbols because of the presence of the channel. The next thing we are going to look at is angle bracket y comma s b ok. Now, this is summation over k real part of Oh, sorry, not real part. So that's not the thing. We have real part. We did not put. So we say b k 
के स्टार जेड के हाउ डिड वी गेट दिस नाउ दिस शुड बी एविडेंट इफ यू राइट द डेफिनेशन डाउन इट्स इंटेग्रल वाई ऑफ टी एंड एस बी स्टार एंड इफ यू नाउ जस्ट if you look at what y and s b are they have the same quantity inside if you write it out you will get this the z essentially takes care of this in other words it's basically summation of all these z k's because your z k has one p of t minus k t your s b has several p minus k t's in the summation in other words you have summation okay let me not do this it's like integral y of t summation b k star p of t minus k t star d t and if you take the y t inside and integral inside you essentially get this expression okay now this is what you have and we are looking for an additive or incremental term so that we can just keep adding and make decisions on symbols as we progress okay now this is what we have next we are going to now make a definition we are going to define the auto correlation sequence of the channel of course the sample channel what does this mean see if you think about it right if you now take the magnitude square of y y has the channel convolved with it so if you now do y if you now take y square okay or you know integral you know if you multiply y by s you know and integrate you will get the channel correlated okay you will get h convolved with sorry sorry you will get the gc convolved with gc reversed so we are going to take these samples and use them wisely in other words this will come in handy as our derivation progresses for now just bear with me i am going to make a definition i am going to call this hm i am going to define hm as integral p of t p star of t minus m t dt always remember this capital t is the symbol duration now this is my definition and hm is actually a correlation sequence because if you uh, if it's an it's an auto correlation sequence and it satisfies this property even for complex channels if you look at h star of minus m you know because it's an auto correlation function you should have the conjugate even property you are going to get integral p of t i'm going to put star here because of the conjugate p of t plus mt dt and you know that this integral is over t and i can always just substitute uh, let's say t plus mt as u so this is going to be integral p star of u minus mt times p of u dt but this is the same as this this is equal to hm so we are going to use this hm which is the deterministic auto correlation of the channel within our further derivation because it will come in very handy it's more convenient to handle than p convolved with p star sampled and all those it's very uh, p convolved with p star sampled at kt is very difficult to express this hm is exactly p convolved with p star shifted that's basically p star of minus t shifted next with this auto correlation sequence we can move on to the next term which is the norm of sb square now norm of sb square intuitively is just the energy or rather the uh, integral square of the combined signal but it has your symbols information in it so we just keep taking that into account and adding it let us start so norm is b square okay remember my definition of sb my definition of sb was summation bk p of t minus kt summation over k so i am going to write as this as angle bracket sb sb but i am going to use two different symbols to express this so that i can do some manipulation in the summation i am going to write this as summation uh, let me see oops summation over k bk p of t minus kt comma summation over m bm p of t minus mt no surprises i am writing the same thing i am just using the definition of sb and writing it again 
but I'm using a different symbol so that I can do the double summation manipulations correctly. In fact, think about it, it is wrong or rather it is very confusing to write the same k here because then your double summations will go incorrect. So now let us just try to simplify this a little bit. Notice that angle bracket that is inner product is a linear operator. So I can change the order of summation and you know uh, taking inner products. So I am going to now write this as a double summation over k double summation over m b k. Now remember when you write the angle bracket notation inner product the second term gets conjugated. So I will get b star m okay and there is an integral it is actually integral so I am putting the integral inside p of t minus k t p star of t minus m t dt. Now if you see this particular term this has a relationship with your definition of hm because if you look at your definition of hm, hm was p of t, p star of t minus mt. So I can get this form by writing this as, I can always add kt to both sides, this is p of t, p star of t minus mt plus kt, something like this. I can do this, right? So I can basically do this manipulation and therefore I can significantly simplify this particular expression. Okay. So I am going to now write this as, let me see, I take the green, this is equal to, yeah, so let us, uh, this is equal to summation k, summation over m, b k, b star m, integral p of t, in fact let me not write the integral form, okay. h of minus k. Okay. So, okay, let me just uh, verify this. star m h of, yes m minus k, yeah this is correct because I have m minus k over here. Now I am going to make a slight manipulation, I am going to actually split this into three parts, okay. I am going to split this into three parts based on m. I am going to take m is equal to 0 or m equal to k rather, m less than k and m greater than k. So I am going to write this into three parts, this is summation over k, okay. I am going to take m to be equal to k, in which case this becomes mod b k square because I am interested in the k symbol primarily, okay. mod b k square h 0, why because I am choosing m is equal to k plus summation over k, summation over m for m less than k. p k b star m h m minus k okay, plus summation over k summation for the m from k plus 1 onwards p k b star m h m minus k. Okay. So I have written the same terms except I have split it into three parts. The first I have taken those terms that have m equal to k separately. Then I am taking summation over k but those terms that have m less than k and then those terms that have m greater than k. So in this manner I am essentially splitting the summation into three parts. But these two parts have something common in looking in them that is let me now go a little up. These two parts, the bottom, these two second and third terms have something common in them. We can make a slight manipulation by just playing a small trick. Let us swap the roles of k and m. So this is equal to summation over k mod b k square h 0 plus summation over k summation and I am going to write this as m less than k 
okay m less than k now b k b star m h m minus k plus and here is the trick summation over m summation over k okay sorry let me not write that m greater than k so let k greater than m but that is the same as this okay k greater than m sorry b m b star k h of k minus m okay did you see what i just did i basically just swapped the roles of k and m but now these summations look like they have something common in them okay so now by doing this i can now combine terms so this is equal to summation over k mod b k square at 0 okay now i am going to write this carefully as summation over k okay summation over k and summation over m less than k b n sorry b k b star m h of m minus k plus b star k b m h of k minus m i just combined these terms okay i i just combined these terms carefully and <coughs> if you see these two have the same form okay they have the same kind of uh, roles and i'm just taking the summation as a common summation and i have b k so if you just look over here as well i can get it so i am over here i am just swapping the roles of b k and b m so i am just getting this as b k b star m h m minus k plus b star k b m h k minus m now here is the interesting trick this is summation over k b k square h 0 plus summation over k summation m less than k two times real part of why because b k b k star b star m b m and h m minus k is h k minus m conjugate so two times real part of and i can write this as i think i will you can write this as b star k b m h k minus m i am choosing the second term you can equivalently write this as b k b star m h m minus k also no problem but this is the way i just choose to write it no difference between the two okay we have done the hard work of expanding the second term also there is a b k here there are b k related terms here this b k related this b k related term is the main term while this is the one which has the interaction between the inter symbol interfere components this is where the mixing due to the channel comes in if there were no channel your h will be non zero only for k equal to m and you will have only a b k term and you will get back your original a w g n detection approach so that is something you should just bear in mind now my lambda b which is my overall metric for all my group of b symbols is equal to summation over k and i am going to summation over k if you now go back and check summation b star z k okay okay then i'm going to just keep the k terms plus okay this was not plus it was minus sorry i'm going to do minus of this because remember it was minus z square by 2 
Okay, so I'm going to do. Okay, minus real part of b star k, b m h k minus m. This is what we get. So this is the summation over here. Oh, there should be a sum over m. I'm so sorry. I missed the summation over m. Let me rewrite that part. Yeah. Minus summation over the k summation is outside m less than k. Okay. Real part of p star k b m h k minus m. We are done with this. Now we will now use the fact that in general our channel has a finite length. In other words, your channel typically acts like an FIR filter or you can approximate it as a finite impulse response filter. So we are going to now make the assumption that HK equal to 0 for that is it is defined only for 0, 1, 2 up to L minus 1. Okay. So L is basically the length of the channel. It has L taps or L non-zero filter coefficients because we are now performing this all these operations for the LTI channel so the channel can be expressed as a filtering operation. So we are going to make this assumption. Now your lambda b with this notation is summation over k b star k z k minus mod b k square h 0 upon 2 and finally plus we are going to have sorry minus should not be plus should be minus because the minus term here minus summation and here is the interesting simplification that we get by making this m is equal to k minus l through k minus 1 because we said m is less than k so m goes from k minus l so we don't need to go all the way back all we need is the last l terms of memory see if your channel introduces L amount of intersymbol interference, then your decision on B K should be affected only by the past L terms and that is getting reflected here. So this inner product essentially accounts for the contribution of those past L terms on for this B K. That is it. <coughs> so now, we were, we were all pining for this additive metric, additive metric. Is this an additive metric? The reason it is an additive metric is because it is summation over k and we can go incrementally because every one of these terms adds up. Therefore, we can use some notation to write lambda k b k s k, s k is the part of you know your uh, s b but the notation is not that significant but we just need to remember the k term what happens this is equal to and i'm going to write this as b star z k oh sorry i need to get my notation right b star k z k minus b k square h0 upon 2 minus real part of b star k b m oh, again I missed the summation let me just add an eraser and you know get the summation yeah h k minus m this is the additive metric additive metric that you can use to figure out your decisions on or rather your matrix on bk and so to speak that is you can use to evaluate lambda b now here is the good part the good part is that this additive metric can be easily computed without having to go through all possible symbols because of the fact that you have to keep in mind only the past l symbols now <coughs> How do we use this? This additive metric itself does not tell you what the optimal BK is. 
This additive metric gives you a hint on how you can combine various possibilities to give you BK. Let me give you an example. The past L symbols uh, can are let us say BK minus 1, BK minus 2 up to BK minus L. Now let us say one past, let us say the previous symbol BK minus 1 was some, let us keep it an example, let us say that you are doing BPSK and let us say that your L is 1 just for a simplicity. So then we have B star K Z K minus and B P S K. So this term is actually just going to be H 0 by 2 will not play a role. So we can actually ignore this because it does not affect uh, uh, the computation for other symbols minus summation and I do not need a summation because I have only one term because L is 1. This is the K minus 1 term. So I am just going to do B star K B K minus 1 H of I think it should be minus 1 yes ok. Now over here what we are going to do is this we are going to evaluate this particular metric for B, B K being plus 1 B K minus 1 being plus 1 then B K being minus 1 B K minus 1 being plus 1. So in other words we are going to enumerate all possible B K B K minus 1 and we are going to say plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 and we are going to evaluate all those matrix then we will do it for k and k plus 1 then we will do it for k plus 1 and k plus 2 and so on and so forth till we get some place where we can make a decision on the past symbols. The question is can you do that? This is where the Witterby algorithm comes in. So what we do is we will actually draw what is called a trellis diagram and let us say that at time k you your b k can be plus 1 or minus 1 at time k plus 1 it can be plus 1 or minus 1 at time k plus 2 it can be plus 1 or minus 1 and what we are going to do is we are going to evaluate the metric lambda n lambda k rather for the appropriate plus, I mean plus 1 to plus 1, evaluate the metric for plus 1 to minus 1, evaluate the metric for minus 1 to plus 1, evaluate the metric for minus 1 to minus 1 and keep doing that and we keep, we note that these met metrics are additive because you had this norm square and you had the summation over k. So what you can do is you can add the metric over here, add the metric over here <coughs> that will give you the straight path add the metric over here, add the metric over here that will give you this path and among the two you notice that you go from this path to this point to this point only the metric which is higher you know assuming that you want to maximize it will survive. In other words once you make a decision here on one of these two paths you can say this metric is higher, this metric is lower so we will just ignore this particular path. So in other words when you go through with the trellis diagram and implement this in practice you will see that there are these combinations and you that will allow you to make decisions in the past which prevent you from having to go through all the possible m power l searches I mean uh, 4 power 1000 searches that is where the Witterby algorithm comes in and we will discuss the Witterby algorithm in the next lecture. Now just to summarize what we did we split our real part of angle bracket y comma s b and norm s b square into convenient parts and then we come we basically use this in order to come up with an additive metric and this additive metric we are using to incrementally detect the received symbols optimally it is not obvious in the next class we are going to cover the Witterby algorithm and discuss the example uh, so that it will become clear to you how you can implement it. So the next lecture we will continue this discussion with the example problem that we discussed in class. So we will stop here thank you.